If we travel back to the year 800 BC, in Greece we would see that merchants whose businesses failed were forced to sit in the marketplace with a basket over their heads. In pre-modern Italy, failed business owners who had outstanding debts were taken totally naked to the public square, where they had to bang their butts against a special stone while a crowd jeered at them. Paul tocmai terminase unul dintre cele mai bune colegii din Bacău. La 20 de ani avea ambiții mari și aspirații în alte. Visul lui era să ajungă în Anglia și să dea la jurnalist. Ca să-și îndeplinească dorința, mai avea nevoie de un singur lucru. O medie de cel puțin 8 la bacalaureat. Marți, când s-au afișat rezultatele, a crezut că visul lui s-a scolberat. Printre noi s-a auzit că părinții l-au certat pentru nota de la bac. In the 17th century, in France, failed business owners were taken to the center of the market, where the beginning of their bankruptcy was publicly announced. And in order to avoid immediate imprisonment, they had to wear a green bonnet, so that everyone knew they were a failure. You've learned to fight and win. You've strived for the victory under the most challenging conditions. But nobody taught you the art of losing gracefully. This is your host JC and today we learn to lose like a winner. Consumerism taught us to buy nice things in order to be happy. But it also taught us to be the best, the fastest the most effective and essentially the winner because the winner is able to buy nice things and, therefore, be happy. And if you can't be the perfect winner, if you even deserve to live, then you should probably live in shame, for the rest of your days. This mentality that some of us might call winner mentality, but which, doesn't indeed help you win, after all, can be found at the origin of some of the most desperate situations that could occur in social life. And yes, as they say, desperate times, call for desperate measures. July 2015, a few days after the Romanian baccalaureate. Paul, a young man from a Romanian city was anxiously waiting for the exam's results that could take him right to Cambridge University, where he intended to pursue an education for a better future. He wanted to become a journalist. When the 18-year-old learns that his dreams were missing less than one point, he decided to contest the result and ask for a remark. But he doesn't have the power to confront the new grades and he throws himself in front of a train. After the remark, his parents learn that he actually got a much better grade that would even have allowed him to go to Cambridge. It was too late. He was a promising young man from an elite Romanian high school but, apparently his education lacked one very important lesson, namely learning to lose like a winner. Yes, learning to lose gracefully proves to be sometimes just as important as learning to be performant. A life lesson that we shouldn't forget to teach our children, maybe, one of the most important lessons regarding the real winner mentality. What good is it for a student to get an A and feel like a loser? Because you are your own best friend, 
you owe to yourself appreciating your own results, however modest they are, mainly on this day of truth, a day when, if you are alone you can at least be on your side. A not so great grade at the baccalaureate requires an important amount of work and effort and the students who get it deserve a word of comfort now, at the beginning of their mature life. Even those who attended the exam and didn't manage to pass, deserve a word of comfort and the recognition for the courage they had. And those who didn't have the courage to attend the exam, probably need the most words of comfort and encouragement. Many of those who don't manage to pass an exam this year, will pass it next time or even later, after they'd have accumulated the right amount of experience and accessed their personal latent resources. Moreover, many of those who barely pass the exams will someday reach to accomplish remarkable things in the educational field. Many of those who never pass the most important school exams are still able to offer society the most beautiful gifts, workplaces, services products, etc. Not all of us succeed in the educational field but our life can still be the greatest success if we manage to live gracefully. After all, as they say, there's no failure, there's only feedback. Loss doesn't have to define who we are and what we can really do in our lives. An exam is just a detail and a resource we couldn't have accessed yet but there are plenty of them all around. The Delirian psychology provides us with a deeper level of understanding the concepts of success and failure. Mental health is related to our understanding and practice of social interest, the interest in the interest of society. Social interest is the universal panacea which allows a person to rise above their own egotism and devote their life to the community, to its health and harmony. The Giver is a 2014 movie based on a novel by Lois Lowry. It is set in a society which at first appears to be utopian but is revealed to be dystopian as the story progresses. The society has taken away pain and strife by converting to sameness, a plan that has also eradicated emotional depth from their lives. Nevertheless the movie remains in the collective memory mainly through the expression thank you for your childhood. A weird and flamboyant saying that could be heard at nonetheless weird and flamboyant ceremony of becoming an adult. You don't have to say the same thing to your own adolescence but it would be nice and useful to remember that you can be supportive even if they didn't manage to raise and match the height of their own expectations. Thus you are able to thank them for their efforts and their courage to dream about a way. I decided to confess to my friends the story of my failed business, and they shared similar stories. In that moment, a thought became really clear in my mind. All of my friends were failures. 